Hey, what's up everyone? So today I want to talk about intrinsic value and specifically answer the question, where should we be spending our time in the markets? So let's get started. So to answer this question where we should be spending our time in the markets, we first need to understand what is value. And there's different types of value. There's intrinsic value, there's liquidation value, there's fair value. We're specifically going to focus on intrinsic value and defining what that is. So we can think about intrinsic value as a complete understanding of an asset's characteristics. For example, that's the understanding of its future growth or as it compares to other assets of similar characteristics or nature. Now let's understand what is valuation. So a critical assumption in equity valuation is that there's a market price that may be significantly different than the intrinsic value. So if one assumes the market price fully reflects the intrinsic value of an asset, then one would just assume or just take the market price as the intrinsic value. Now this may not always, always be true. Now this brings us to, to an interesting concept called the Grossman-Stiglitz paradox. So the Grossman-Stiglitz paradox is this idea that if market prices, which are freely obtainable, you, you can just go to your Apple phone or your Robinhood account and access these, these prices. If the market price perfectly reflects the intrinsic value of an asset, then no rational investor would take or incur the time or cost to obtain the information and analyze that information to get a second estimate of that security's value. So by, by that I mean no, no investor would take time away from their day to analyze this, uh, this company, to build a model, to figure out what the competitor analysis is, the business model, to obtain that estimate of that intrinsic value, of that security's value. Now this is where the paradox comes along. So now the paradox is if no investor is taking the time to incur these costs to obtain this information and analyze the information about a security's value, then how can the market price fully reflect the intrinsic value? If no one's taking the time to understand these assets, to compare them, to look at its future projected value, then how can the market price be an estimate of the true value, the true real value? So we can take this further and ask the question that if the intrinsic value is truly difficult to obtain, that would imply that the intrinsic value and the market price has a large deviance from each other. So we can put this all together and answer our first question or begin to answer our first question. And that is, where should we be spending our time in the stock market? And so, and to answer that question, it really comes down to finding markets where it's very hard to obtain the intrinsic value of an asset. It, the cost, the time to understand that asset, its, its investment characteristics has to be extremely high. The bar needs to be high. Therefore, there hasn't, there, maybe sh there shouldn't be a lot of institutional money in that space. Maybe there aren't large hedge funds with analysts covering, covering these securities. Because if you take the time and effort to focus on these securities, there would be a larger deviance from the market price and therefore larger alpha and therefore more potential to make profits. And so this goes along with the whole efficient market hypothesis of there's very efficient markets, for example, like maybe the S&P 500 stocks or inefficient markets like emerging markets where and maybe that's where you should be spending more of your time in analyzing and obtaining information. So if you like this video, please subscribe. In our next videos, we're going to continue to play around with these hypotheses about efficient markets and potentially build models around these inefficient markets to find alpha. So till next time. Thanks, guys.